history of classification and in this uh, topic we will uh, study the contribution of different uh, scientists in classification and what systems were given by these scientists. First of all, we will, uh, uh, we will have some information about Aristotle. Aristotle was a Greek philosopher and he classified living organism into two groups, planty and animalia. So we consider that it was the first scientist who gave the um, who classified the organism into two major groups. Next to that comes Abu Usman Umar Al Jahiz. Abu Usman Umar Al Jahiz in 70s in 1700s he, uh, what he did he described 350 species of animals in his book. He also wrote about ants. So there were two major contribution of Abu Usman al Jahis. Next next is Andrea Cesar Pino. His time period was from 1519 to 1603 and he what he did he divided plants into fifteen groups and he called them genera. Next to that comes John Ray. What he did, he published important work on plants classification. Mean he classify plants. His important work on plants. Next was Augustus Arevinus and his major contribution was the taxon of order. He introduced the order. And the next was Tony Fort. He introduced the taxa of class and sepishi. Next and the main contribution was by Carlos Linnaeus. Carlos Linnaeus grouped uh, sepishi according to similar physical characters and he also gave the scientific rules for scientific naming which we are using in our taxonomy. The first main system of classification was two kingdom classification. The scientist grouped the organisms into two major categories. The first one was autotrophs in which all those living organisms or the uh, actually plants were included in this group which can prepare their food by themselves. So they are categorized in autotrophs and the next was heterotroph. Heterotroph were those which cannot prepare their food they obtain their food from the autotroph. So that was two kingdom classification because all the living organisms are categorized into two groups. One is autotroph and other is heterotroph. But there was some drawbacks in this classification system. Some unicellular organism don't have any clear position. The uh, the, uh, the position is not defined about of the unicellular organisms. For example, euglena-like organism don't have any proper place. They, uh, uh, when they prepare their food, they are included in autotrophs and in the absence of light they could not prepare their food so they are included in the heterotroph. And one reason is there was no difference between organisms which have prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So those were the two drawbacks of this two kingdom classification system. After that, a three kingdom classification system was introduced by Ernst Haeckel in 1866. 
that third kingdom classification also has a third category that was protista in which unicellular organisms were given a proper place but there were also some drawb drawbacks in this system what were these there was no difference between prokaryote and eukaryote prokaryote and eukaryote still not defined in this system and there was an other drawback fungi included in the plant although the fungi have chitin in their cell wall their cell wall is not made up of cellulose the plant cell wall is made up of cellulose but the fungi cell wall is made up of chitin and the second prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms were not differentiated these two drawbacks were still there in the three kingdom classification system so after that another system was introduced by e chatter in 1937 and he suggested prokaryotes and eukaryotes properly these two terms were defined by e chatter after defining prokaryotes and eukaryotes robert witkar in 1967 introduced five kingdom classification system in which five major kingdoms were defined properly that five kingdom system of classification was based on level of cellular organization some were prokaryotes some were unicellular and eukaryotes and some were multicellular eukaryotes that was cellular organization and the second base was mode of nutrition how nutrition uh, provided to the organism although they prepare their food or they absorb their food from other organisms or they intake their food so these two were the basis these two are the basis that is the first one cellular organization and second one mode of nutrition these two were the basis of five kingdom classification system on the base of these two uh, points the organisms are classified into five kingdoms five major categories and those are monera protista fungi plants and animalia those are the five main kingdoms five principal groups these are also called five principal group of living organisms and after uh, that another scientist Margulis and Scavers in 1988 <coughs> they modified the five kingdom classification system what was their modification although the five kingdom classification system was based on these two points first one is cellular organization and second one is mode of nutrition what was the modification of Margulis and Scavers they also considered genetics in the classification they also included genetics along with these two points these two bases along with these two bases genetics was also considered as a base of classification that was the contribution of margulis and scavers and that was the modification of five kingdom classification system and that modification was given by these scientists in 1988 that is all about the five kingdom classification system its basis and in the next uh, lecture we will discuss the general characters of these five principal groups in detail thank you